Hello and thank you for joining me again on this five mile circular walk between Heswell Dales and Thurstason. We're going to start where we stopped in part one at the top of Station Road and walk down towards the River Dee. Near the end we take a right into a car park area and then walk to the Whittle Way where we turn left. Here we find ourselves in an area that was once Thurstason Station. Most of you will know that the Whittle Way was a railway line which closed to rail traffic in 1962. But did you know that the only recorded train collision on the line happened here on the morning of Monday the 25th of February 1957? There was a head-on crash between two trains. Luckily nobody was killed. We're now going to step up to Thurston Field. During the Second World War, anti-aircraft guns were placed in this area to help protect the city of Liverpool. Munitions for the guns were brought on the railway. If you look to our right, you will see the visitor centre with a pond to its left. However, we're going to walk over to the left of the field. But before we do, here are some images when the ponds were frozen. On the far side of the field are a number of ponds shown as clay pits on the old maps. The top path to Tinker's Dell is currently closed, but here is a view taken from the path last summer on a glorious sunny day. Walking back along the cliff path, we're going to leave the field. On our left is a sign showing the way to the beach, but we are going to continue straight on along this private road. Towards the end of the road, if you look slightly to the right, you will see an entrance to the Dorpool Nature Reserve. Unfortunately, as you can also see, this area is not well maintained. At the end of the road is Thursus and Slipway, and to the right is the D Sailing Club. The club started as the Heswell Sailing Club in 1919. But as the river continued to silt up, they moved along to the cottages on the shore that we'll see later on in the walk. But again, with further silting of the river, they had to move again in the 1960s to this location. This causeway is used by cocklers to offload their catch onto waiting vehicles. We've come across the name Dorpool on a number of occasions. Indeed, Dorpool House was bought by Thomas Ismay, the shipping line owner, in 1877. Off the coast here is Dorpool Bank, but I believe to the right was the Dorpool Anchorage. In the early 1800s, this mooring became the port for Ireland as the river silted up and Park Gate could no longer be used. We are now going to make our way back along the beach. In the freshly revealed clay, you can see that the wild flower, Colt's foot, has already taken root. These are shore cottages, now one dwelling. There is some evidence that possibly two Chester customs men were placed here when Dorpool was active as a port.
continuing along the beach you can see evidence of further landslides. This is Tinker's Dell. It's believed that the missing village, Strongby, was sighted just off this area, but all evidence has now been washed away. The clay you see is boulder clay, deposited by melted glaciers 12 to 14,000 years ago. When the glaciers receded, they also left behind boulders of granite called erratics. You can see lots of wildlife in the estuary, but also evidence on the beach. This is the remains of a lion's mane jellyfish. As well as us walkers, lots of other people follow other activities. We are now going to leave the beach here, just below Hesel Fields. We'll go up this gully just to our left. This is Wirral's only National Trust property, purchased as part of the Neptune Coastline project, which started in 1965. When we first saw this field, some 10 years ago, it was covered in wild meadow flowers. We'll head over to the top right of the field, just past the pond, and at the end of a path, we'll turn right onto the Wirral Way. Most of you will know the Cheshire County Council bought the old railway land in 1969 and opened it up to the public as the first country park in Great Britain. near the end of our walk now and we'll leave the Wirral Way here at Banks Road. All that's left for us to do is to turn left and head up the road over a bridge and back to Piper's Lane where we started. I hope you've enjoyed the walk and perhaps you'll join me again in the future. Now it's time for my cup of tea and a slice of cake. Goodbye.